It's funny, yeah. isn't it? Because uh, we Australians are very reluctant to talk about love. You know, we we consider ourselves pretty tough people, and um, it's almost people go out of their way to avoid the word love in a way and talk about something else. But yeah, love is is clearly the key. Love, love of of the land, love of of fellow human beings, and love of ourselves too. You know, so that we actually value ourselves and. The contribution that we might make to society and and to nature, um, but nature in Australia is a tough master, you know, a, a taskmaster. And if we love it, it's got to be kind of tough love. <laughs> it can't be sentimental, you know. We can't sentimentalise the place uh, in the way that Wordsworth uh, wrote about the uh, the landscape in uh, in England, you know, the green and and the flowing daffodils and so on. I mean, our, <clears throat> our land here is tough, so tough love is required. And when we have tough love, um, we recognise that, that in all probability, you know, the land is not going to uh, necessarily always take care of us in the way that we would choose. So that's part of what the love is. Um, Khalil Gibran in his book The Prophet speaks about work being love made visible. Mm -hmm. you, you suggesting there's a new kind of work that we need to do as we go forward? Is there a different way of working and, and using what has been normally an ego battle? Is there a different way of working and understanding the land and our place in it? Well I think, I think we've got to be careful about how different. I think that in Australia there's, I think in Australia there is deep love. Uh, for our work, for, for our countryside, for each other. But we are so embarrassed to use that word that we, we don't talk about it as love. But I think that the Australian manner is to be um, laconic, few, few words as possible. And we certainly don't stand on ceremony and, and, and we don't turn ourselves into sort of backyard philosophers and, and, and create this kind of, you know, we don't like big words in this country. We, we, we're very um, suspicious, actually, of philosophy and religion and mysticism. And yet, the other side of the coin is that we are deeply philosophical and often religious and often deeply mystical. So it's almost like the love that dare not speak its name or you know, the spirituality that dare not speak its name. I think in, in Australia we, um, uh, we, we think that part of what it means to be Australian is not to be too verbose and not to be too um, articulate. So, yeah, particularly among men, I mean men are notorious in Australia for saying as few words as possible, especially when it counts, you know, the people you love, if you've had war experience, you come back and you don't even mention it. You don't even tell your loved ones about what you did in Egypt or New Guinea or Turkey or wherever it was, you know, Vietnam. So there is this tradition in Australia of, of, of actually not speaking about the things that matter. Um, that's changing, I think, with the, the, the new generations uh, like for instance my children you know they're very articulate and they'd like to talk and they don't understand actually the traditional Australian reticence about speaking about things that matter so I don't think it's a I don't think it's an issue of um, developing any new uh, appreciations I think Australians have always had this undercurrent of meaningfulness in their in their day-to-day -day lives it might be just that we're less um, inhibited about speaking about it now, particularly in the face of, of the fire and the tragedy that follows in its wake, that we can hopefully you know, express our hearts with less embarrassment than we have in, in the past. Mm.